Hello, I'm Jan Painter, and I would like to welcome you again to our program, Politics Matters. Our guest today is Charlottesville City Mayor Dave Norris. Mayor Norris was born into a military family at Fort Belvoir, Virginia, grew up in Stuttgart, Germany, and in Northern Virginia. He received a BA in Politics and History from Curry College in Massachusetts and an MA in Government from William and Mary. Mayor Norris moved to Charlottesville in 1995, was voted onto city council in 2006, and elected mayor in 2008. Professionally, he has served as nonprofit director, and in his civic life, he has worked to promote affordable housing, to further the cause of social justice, and to advance responsible use of our environment. Dave is executive director for Big Brother Big Sisters of the Blue Ridge, served as executive director of Pachem, is a founding director for Connecting People to Jobs Initiative, and as coordinator for the Virginia Economic Development Corps' microloan program. He has served on the Charlottesville Redevelopment and Housing Authority, Piedmont Housing Alliance, the Thomas Jefferson Area Coalition for the Homeless, and JABA. Welcome, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Good to be here. Today, we're going to explore the topic of Charlottesville's sister city partnering relationships and what they can mean for our community. In an age which is, as we all know, increasingly global in every aspect of our lives, understanding the landscape of other nations can be a way of coming home for a country whose roots reach around the globe and back again. In preparing this program, I was discussing with a friend the off-sighted idea that it is difficult to dislike, much less hate an individual, when you begin to come to know and understand them. He then put me in mind of a quote by Lincoln, which was more than apposite. Quote, I don't like that man. I must get to know him better. This deceptively simple statement of truth is perhaps the best rationale for the need to consider city-to-city -city exchange and partnerships. First of all, Dave, let's hear a little bit about the organization Sister Cities International. What is it, and how does it function? Well, uh, Sister Cities International is essentially a network of all the communities around the globe that participate in these sister city relationships. Um, there are dozens and dozens of countries that are now members uh, who have cities who are members of Sister Cities International who have paired up cities in one country uh, with another country and to promote international exchanges to encourage people to reach out beyond their borders, get to know people from another way of life, another background, another culture. Um, and I think you, you really hit the nail on the head when you said that um, if you get, develop a relationship with somebody, if you get to know somebody, it's much harder to hate them. It's much harder to distrust them. And what Sister Cities is really all about is about building connections between peoples um, and expanding the horizons of people um, uh, so that they can see there's much more to the world than just what's you know, around the corner or up the street um, or even you know, a couple hundred miles away. Mm -hmm. It's a great opportunity for, uh, for residents of uh, Charlottesville, in our case, uh, to be exposed to cultures uh, and ways of life that are um, quite different in some ways, but quite similar in other mm -hmm. ways. Um, and uh, we're, I'm really pleased to see the program growing and it's gotten tremendous support from the community here and I think there's lots of opportunity in the future. Well, it's very exciting. How long has Charlottesville been involved in sister city partnerships? Our oldest sister city is about 30 years old, um, actually a little bit over 30 years old. Uh, it was created um, during the bicentennial. Um, it was a partnership between Charlottesville and a city in Italy called Poggio Acaiano. Um, and the reason, the connection with the Bicentennial is that uh, there's a gentleman uh, named Filippo Mazze, who was one of, uh, a, a close friend of Thomas Jefferson, who was um, influential in the early days of the revolution here in this country. And um, in honor of that friendship that those two gentlemen had, Charlottesville and Poggio Acaiano, which was Filippo Mazze's hometown, decided uh, to create a sister city linkage back in the, uh, the, around the bicentennial. Um, and since then, um, 
uh, there's been numerous exchanges back and forth between Charlottesville and Poggio. Um, and uh, that's probably our strongest sister city relationship. Uh, since then, there have been three other sister cities, uh, sister city partnerships created. Um, we have a partnership with a city in France called Besançon, which our uh, former mayor, Blake Caravati, was instrumental in setting up. Uh, we have a partnership with a city in Bulgaria called Pleven, uh, which our former city manager, Gary O'Connell, uh, helped to set up. Mm -hmm. And then most recently, uh, we have a relatively new uh, sister city partnership with a city in Africa, in Ghana, called Winneba, um, which uh, I've been very involved in, along with some other folks here in Charlottesville, and it's been a wonderful opportunity. I know you're very excited about talking about that, and at the end of the program, right. we're, we're, I definitely want to hear from you sure. about that. Um, how do you cho go about choosing sister cities? I think my people might be interested in it. What's the criteria? Mm -hmm. What protocol do you have to follow? Well, until recently, there wasn't um, a set process, uh, or, or there weren't uh, specific criteria for doing this. Um, uh, but a couple years ago, um, the city council decided we want to formalize our sister city program, which had been a little bit loose-knit uh, in the past, formalize it. We actually created, two years ago, we created a standing sister cities commission, which local citizens are appointed to, uh, to help oversee the sister city program. Uh, that commission, one of its first tasks was to come up with formal criteria for approving new sister cities so that it didn't happen just sort of randomly, mm -hmm. but that there was a real thoughtful effort put into justifying it and, 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 um, uh, and advancing it. Um, Winneba in Ghana was the very first uh, city to go through that new process. Um, it was, it's an excellent process. Ask a lot of questions about the nature, uh, potential nature of the relationship. Mm -hmm. um, is there community support here in Charlottesville? Um, sister cities can't function, can't survive if they're, um, unless they're really owned by the community. Mm -hmm. It can't be something that just one official does um, um, or one, mm -hmm. uh, somebody in City Hall takes on. Uh, it's really got to be owned by the community. And so we want to know, is there community support for this to sustain it over time, both financially and otherwise? That's the other thing, is that um, the city doesn't have, the uh, city of Charlottesville doesn't have a lot of funding available for sister cities. So most of the funding has to come from the community, from individual I see. donors, I see. business donors, et cetera. Um, and uh, so there is now official criteria, there's official commission, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's in real good place right now. Do you choose them based on sort of you know, the geography, similar institutions, a university, medical facility, arts, uh, community? How, how uh, does yes. that happen? Yes, <laughs> all yeah. of the above. Yeah. Um, you want to look for, we, we want to, the goal is to try to find communities that are similar mm -hmm. in that, you know, we wouldn't want to be matched up with a huge city somewhere sure. where we may not be on similar paths or in similar circumstances. The idea with sister cities is that we can learn a lot from each other, both about how to provide public services, mm -hmm. but also we learn each other's culture. We learn. We give opportunities for young people to travel back and forth, or, or to be exposed to, to other cultures. Uh, there's opportunities for business uh, relationships, yeah. investment, um, trade. Um, there's all kinds of opportunities, and so you want to find communities that are roughly equivalent to where we can foster those kinds of exchanges. Um, until recently, we we didn't have any any sister cities. Um, outside of Europe. Um, and the reality is there's a lot more to the world than just sure, Europe. Sure. And so uh, Winneba and Ghana was our first attempt to break out of uh, that mold. Um, but so I think geography is important. Mm -hmm. And I would say it's uh, really, uh, if, if and when we get to the point of looking at additional sister cities, um, I would uh, expect uh, you know, uh, cities that might be in Asia or mm -hmm. uh, Central America or South America or the Caribbean um, to probably get priority rather than more c c uh, cities in Europe or even Africa. So. What is meant by the term, um, I encountered this, citizen diplomacy, and how does it function in connection with the sister city uh, process? Well, you know, it's, it's similar in some ways to um, the Peace Corps um, and other efforts mm -hmm. to engage American citizens in service and in partnership with uh, communities around the globe, mm -hmm. where we can be our people can be ambassadors for our country um, in a way that you know, official ambassadors are limited. 
when we went to Africa or when I went to Italy or others have gone to France or Bulgaria, um, you can create direct relationships with uh, citizens of these other cities um, in a, and stay in their homes or stay and, and patronize their businesses and, and participate in their festivals and eat their food. And it's uh, citizen to citizen diplomacy um, that uh, builds bridges between nations. And um, I honestly feel like if, if, you know, if you look at all the sort of hot spots around the globe that are either where there either are active, uh, there's active strife or potential for strife. If we had, if there were more sister cities between those nations, between those peoples, um, where everyday citizens and local officials and business leaders and artists and students had developed relationships, um, I think people would be less willing to support uh, strife and warfare and bloodshed. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. One of the things I noticed Sister Cities International talked about was the fact that you could actually uh, reduce the amount of terrorism. Oh, you know, sure. Uh, obviously, sure. obvious point in what you're talking about. Yeah. Um, uh, how have you found uh, in mayor-to-mayor partnering? Mm -hmm. um, how does that work? And have you found it useful uh, in terms of uh, democratic governance, uh, shared ideas? Mm -hmm. Um, certainly. Uh, I, I've met two mayors now. For, well, I've actually met three, but uh, I've gone to visit uh, the sister city in Italy and our new one in Winneba in Ghana. And I uh, got to uh, sit down in both, uh, both of those cities and talk with the mayors about you know, uh, their communities, how governance works there. It's fascinating. I'm a student of government and their politics, and so I always enjoy hearing about how other uh, parts of the world uh, structure governance and how, you know, in, in Africa, for instance, in Ghana, um, uh, I won't get into a lot of detail, but there's two separate, um, basically, lines of gover mm -hmm. governance. You have the traditional governance, which is uh, uh, the chieftains, mm -hmm. the tribal chieftains, mm -hmm. who still uh, have a significant amount of power, and then you have the civil authorities who are uh, elected or, or appointed um, uh, similar to, you know, what we have here in this country. And there's uh, oftentimes tension between the traditional authorities and the civil authorities, and it's not always entirely clear who's responsible for what. So that, to me, as a student of politics, no, is fascinating. It is you fascinating. Know, um, okay, practical yeah. matters. Where does the money come from for this? Well, um, uh, it's, as I said, the city puts in a little bit, mon a little bit of money, not so much to fund trips mm -hmm. for you know elected officials or um, it, it, mostly that money frankly has gone in, in the recent years has gone towards you know when we have delegations that visit from mm -hmm. our sister cities to be able to help cover some of their costs just being a good you know uh, a good host sure um, but for instance when we went to Winneba in 2009 uh, the city of Charlottesville didn't put in a dime into that that was a hundred percent money that was raised from the community um, some individuals paid out of, out of pocket mm -hmm. who yeah. went on that trip. Uh, we had fundraisers in the community. Actually, the Dave Matthews Band um, yeah, chipped in a significant amount of money to support the cost uh, of that so trip. They're so involved. Civically. Oh, they're wonderful. It's, it's remarkable, yeah. Um, but when we have uh, youth groups that go back and forth, for instance, uh, almost every year a group from Charlottesville, a group of young people go and participate in a soccer tournament in Pojo, a Kayano. It's a, an exchange, a soccer exchange. It's great. Because, you know, in other parts of the world, well, it's football there, but they just love football. That's and just, sports is the great equalizer. Sports is a great equalizer. Yeah. So, um, and they raise money for that trip, all again, all from the community. Um, most of the money that, that funds the trips and the exchanges comes from the community. That's good to know, because as you know, um, there's been some criticism about uh, a while back about some funding and uh, Things like that happen, mm -hmm. I, I think. But well, so. I think if you're a taxpayer and you're looking at priorities, um, and you see the city, you know, cutting funding for schools, for instance, or or whatever. Not that we've had to do that here, but in Albemarle County, for instance, they've cut money for schools. You see local governments having to make really tough mm -hmm. choices. Um, then you, you know, some people will ask the question: Well, why are we putting any money into the sister city sure. program? Um, I happen to believe that. Um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's in the grand scheme of things, it's a tiny amount of money that we we do put into mm -hmm. the sister city program. Um, but I believe that it it pays great rewards, particularly for those members of our community who do have a chance to uh, either 
uh, travel abroad uh, or interact with people when they travel here, um, I really do think it, it's enriching to our community. Yeah, I know so. that recently there was a, a fr French-American uh, gospel uh, right. exchange, right. which was tremendously successful, right. uh, which uh, a great friend of Sister Cities, Louisa Dixon, helped mm -hmm. uh, organize yeah. and, and manage. Yeah. So, uh, And that was a tremendous success it on was. both sides of the it Atlantic. Was. And that's one where there wasn't a dime of city money mm -hmm. that went into that one. So there's... The, the little money we do put in tends to leverage a lot more money from, mm -hmm. from the community, mm -hmm. from private sector. And yeah, I think that the main complaints I think people sometimes hear is that it's a, perhaps a bit elitist or there's a finite number of people involved in it. And from right. what you can see, uh, that is not the case. Hmm? Well, and I think uh, it's, a good, it's a good point because if a sister city relationship is only about uh, elected officials and, and, and sort of community leaders having the opportunity to travel or in, in interact with people from other countries, then I don't think it's a success. I think, I think successful, the successful sister city relationships are those in which everyday citizens have a chance to travel or interact with uh, folks from other countries. And I can give you numerous, numerous examples of how that's happened here in Charlotte. So. What kind of business opportunities come about as a result of, uh, of this involvement? Well, I'd say that's one area in which we haven't really, um, we haven't seen a lot of movement yet in our sister city program mm -hmm. is opening the door to uh, business uh, exchanges and trade. Um, uh, I recently had a meeting where I was talking with some f folks about, um, you know, I wonder, we were wondering if, uh, if there might be an opportunity um, to either work with one of the existing mm -hmm. retail merchants uh, in the city or maybe set up a new enterprise that uh, offers goods, retail goods, from our various sister cities. We could import them um, and then sell them here because there's some beautiful uh, you know, artwork, clothing, mm -hmm. art, mm -hmm. jewelry, uh, you name it, uh, products that are made in, in, uh, in, in Ghana, France, Italy, Bulgaria. Um, I could see that having some potential, but I'd say right now it's been pretty limited. I was mm -hmm. actually excited to hear this morning, I found out this morning that at the Darden School in a couple weeks, or maybe this week, I don't know, they're having a, a, a forum about um, uh, business in Africa. And uh, so I'm hoping to be able to get over there to be able to participate in that, to learn about how uh, we might use the Sister City program to encourage business relationships uh, mm -hmm. in our new sister city. Oh, I know people would be interested in that. Yeah. Areas of youth mentoring and education. Tell us a little about that. Well, um, we've had students from, other, from our sister cities come and study here in Charlottesville, um, and that's been great. It's been uh, not a lot. There haven't been a lot of students so far. Uh, as I said, we've had youth groups go over from Charlottesville mm -hmm. to visit our sister cities, uh, whether to play soccer, uh, the youth orchestra is going to our uh, uh, Charleston Youth Orchestra is going next this summer to Pojo Akano to perform there. Um, the in Winneba, Winneba has one of the best youth choirs in the world, um, um, and um, one of our goals is to try to uh, see if we can't get that youth choir to come and perform in Charlottesville. I know they have a thriving music uh, oh, scene sure. there that's quite sure. remarkable. Um, one of the projects that we're looking at doing in Winneba is uh, work helping Winneba to build their first public library. They don't have any library. And, you know, in Charleston, wow. is such a book-friendly town. And um, this is a project that we chose because we know that uh, we, we feel like it's something that people in Charleston can really get behind, the idea of helping this community to build their first library oh, and to equip it with books, idea. with donated books. Yeah. Um, it's still in the early stages. But... One of the aspects of that, it won't just be a library, but also have a computer center, a computer lab there. And um, uh, actually the associate, the assistant director of Computers for Kids, which is a youth mentoring program here in Charlottesville, just spent three weeks in Winneba, um, just got back yesterday, I think, um, and was exploring the idea of uh, creating youth to youth, mm -hmm. student to student um, networks, you know, using the internet and basically having students from both of our communities connect with each other, relate with each other. Um, and How about exciting. issues of water? Because water, as we all know, is going to be one of the great issues mm -hmm. of, of our of 20, uh, 
2011 <laughs> uh, and, and beyond. Right. So um, have you gotten some ideas? We're in the sure. midst of a uh, dam versus dredging kind of uh, <laughs> right, uh, right. controversy between the county and the city. So. Um, one thing that uh, Europe, is Europe is far ahead of us, and Besançon especially, which Besançon, the city in France, uh, really prides itself on, its, uh, on being really innovative with green design, green development, environmentally friendly construction, uh, which includes a real emphasis on water conservation and energy conservation, um, in addition to many other aspects. Um, so there's certainly a lot that we can learn from uh, our sister city there about how to get smarter about water conservation, water efficiency. In Ghana, it's a totally separate set of issues relating to sanitation, um, where there's, um, you know, there's still large parts of that country that don't have uh, indoor plumbing, that don't have access to clean, safe water. And we have wonderful resources here in the city and at the University of Virginia mm -hmm. uh, where we can help places like Winneba to develop their water infrastructure, which I think is, uh, is a pretty neat opportunity. This is uh, an an unfairly reductive question, I know, but if you looked at each of the four sister cities and you could pick um, one thing from each of them that you found the, the most profound uh -huh. in terms of learning, I'd be interested well, to hear. Um, I'll, I'll speak about, well, Besançon, I, I haven't been to yet, but um, people from Charlottesville that have been there always speak about um, how innovative and committed they are to environmental sustainability. And in fact, there was a student from Charlottesville college student who went to visit Besançon last year and wrote a thesis paper about this very topic, about how Besançon is incorporating environmental sustainability in, in all of its operations and how we might, um, um, we might adopt some of those same practices here. So that's, that's one from Besançon. From, um, from Winneba, um, by, uh, far and above, the, the, I've, I've traveled a lot of places in my life. I've been to 30 some odd countries and 49 states, and I've never been anywhere in, in my life where I felt safer walking around a city at all hours of the night, which I did, than when I was in Winneba. Um, there is such a, they, they don't have a culture of stranger on stranger violence there. They have such a strong ethic of hospitality. They greet everybody as a friend. Um, when you meet somebody, one of the first questions they ask you is, how's your family? You know, it's just such a, a very warm, um, generous people. And I think we could learn a lot. I actually felt safer walking around Winneba at night than I do walking around Charlottesville at night. And I feel pretty safe walking around Charlottesville, don't get me wrong. But um, that to me was a real profound sort of eye-opening experience. Um, Poggio... Um, Pojo is a city, uh, an old city, I mean, as many European cities are, and uh, they do a, a, a really good job of historic preservation, which I think we have that ethic here in Charlottesville, but I, I feel like we could do even more in that regard. I'm not as familiar with Plevin. Uh, Plevin is a sister city that really hasn't seen much activity in recent years. Um, if we had the same criteria now for sister cities, in order, in, in other words, in showing that there's broad community support to sustain it and opportunities for all kinds of exchanges. We probably wouldn't have chosen Plevin um, now with the process we have mm -hmm. now. Um, so I really can't say much about Plevin, um, but certainly the other three, there's a lot we can learn. How does the city plan to increase awareness uh, about sister city projects and mm -hmm. increase funding as well? Um, one of the things is uh, uh, we are uh, building a, a better sister city web page um, so to be able to tell the story of each of these um, uh, partnerships uh, that it will be part of our, our city's website. Um, and, um, and then each of the individual sister cities uh, has uh, uh, you know, volunteers that are involved in nurturing those relationships and, for instance, with the Winneba Sister City Partnership, we're creating, we're in the process right now of creating a website just for that that will be linked to the, the Charlottesville Sister City website, um, which is going to have a lot of information. Oh, that's great. Um, and, you know, and just, I think just using the media, when we have visitors from abroad, when the folks from Winneba came here this past year, we had a lot of media attention 
and they were very visible in the community for a good 10 days, which is nice. Oh, that's terrific. Um, let's see if we have a little bit of time here. Um, do you want to tell us a little, your favorite Winneba story? Because I <laughs> promised at the beginning and I'm interested. There's so many uh, stories. Uh, we went in uh, 2009, in May of 2009, and um, it's the first week of May. The first week of May, the first Saturday of May in Winneba, um, every year, is uh, their biggest annual festival. It's called the Abuacha Festival. And uh, I often liken it to uh, Mardi Gras here in this country. It's a big festival. They have parades. They have uh, music. They have dancing. Um, they have all kinds of rituals. And people come from all over Ghana to Winneba for this weekend, for this Abuacha Festival. Um, that's, so uh, we're, we're uh, hoping to be able to go back this year for the Abuacha Festival as well. Um, just being there mm -hmm. amidst all this uh, fest, you know, festive uh, chaos <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> it was I like great that. fun. And they, were, they just ro really rolled out the welcome mat. When we came into town, there's this huge banner over the main square of Winneba that says, uh, Welcome Charlottesville, Winneba loves you. you oh, know? that's wonderful. And they just, again, there's such a strong culture of hospitality there. I, I can tell you so many stories. Dave, I want to thank you for coming and speaking with us today about this very fascinating topic, and I hope people will get involved. Our city's very informative website recounts the history of Charlottesville's earliest experience with Sister City Partnering, as Dave was saying at the beginning of the program, Poggio Acaiano. And as he mentioned also, the Italian Filippo Mezzai forged a friendship with Franklin and uh, Thomas Adams. Uh, while he was doing business in London. And at their suggestion, he relocated to Virginia in order to increase his business and received then an introduction by Adams to Jefferson. The site quotes, but Tsai and Jefferson shared views about democratic principles and that Tsai introduced Jefferson in Charlottesville to Italian grapevines. I can think of no more fitting metaphor for the exciting possibilities for interrelationships and learning between partner cities we share a common root system. Why not come to the table and share the harvest? My thanks again to Mayor Dave Norris for his informative discussion. Thank you at home for joining in our conversation. If you would like to find out more about Charlottesville City Sister City Partnerships, you can consult Sister Cities International at www.sistercities-cities.org. The City of Charlottesville website, as Dave was discussing, as well as our website at politicsmatters.org. We are very interested in hearing from you with questions, concerns, and ideas for upcoming programs. You can email us at info at politicsmatters.org. We air Tuesday and Saturday at 8 p.m. Thank you again, and until next time, I'm Jan Painter, and this is Politics Matters. <laughs>